everybody, this is Matt Crump with Hope Revealed and super excited to be with you again today. And um, I have just a, a little known person here on, uh, on the program today. Few people know who she is, uh, Miss Shay Robottom. And uh, I'm super excited to have her here with us to be able to share some incredible stories of hope and how you can find, find the, it's the resilience, how you can find uh, the opportunity to press in. I mean, the reality is a lot of times we're faced with wanting to give up. We're faced with wanting to say, I don't know if anybody hears me. And uh, I can tell you what, Shay understands that completely. And she didn't give up. Um, she still can't give up. It's not a world where you can just sit back and rest and like everything just goes on coast. It gets easier, but uh, the work is always there. So um, we, we get to find a little bit about that from Shay today and, and hopefully in a little different light than what you may be used to in hearing some of her awesome stuff, like when she like imitates Gary Vee or something like that. <laughs> yeah. so, so Shay, if you wouldn't just mind introducing yourself to folks and, uh, and let's get rolling here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me, Matt. Yeah. Um, so I am a video creator on the LinkedIn platform. I'm one of the fastest growing, uh, people on LinkedIn right now when it comes to video. She's actually um, 11 feet tall, y'all. 11. <laughs> yeah, <tall>. right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, my background, you know, is, uh, working on social media, creating content for businesses and brands. Um, I, uh, historically have worked on platforms like Facebook and Instagram a little more. I moved into LinkedIn last year once I saw the opportunity for uh, organic growth and B2B marketing there. So now what I do is I help individuals and businesses create a content strategy that's actually effective for them, that's going to get them seen by their target market and seen as an expert and get people to do business with them. So that's what I'm well, up that's to. Well, amazing. So you're not just a video gal making fun videos on, on the social media market, right? <laughs> yeah. You actually have a business yourself. Thank and, you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and you do, you do marketing, right? So yes. how do, uh, I mean, do you have uh, an agency that people contact for something like that? Or how do, people, how do people reach you for something like that to say, look, I mean, what does that mean? Some folks don't even know what content is, what you mean by Yeah, it. yeah, what, absolutely. What is that? Absolutely. Yeah. So there is more information on my website, shayrobottom.com. There's a form there. You can actually fill out to see if you are uh, a good fit to for us to work together. Um, but yeah, you know, there's there's different levels of um I guess you could say like education when people come in. Some people come in and they literally have nothing. They're like, we're not doing any organic content. We just need to start. Some people, you know, have started and like are doing the videos, but just not really getting a lot of traction, not attracting the right people. Um, so it, it kind of depends on where people are at, but we work with you through all phases, you know, teaching you how to come up with the strategy, how to uh, automate it on the back end so you're not killing yourself with time and um, how to make it fluid so that it's consistent. Well, that sounds awesome. So with, without giving away the farm, how are, you know, what would be some like general ideas or tips for somebody who's trying to get started that thinks there's no way I'm going to be able to contact Shay Robottom and afford her services, right? That's the first thing people are, that's the first thing people are going to think, right? So for people that are thinking that, um, what would be some general ideas for somebody that's, that's really trying hard to get heard and, and really passionate about what they're trying to do? Yeah, no, totally. Um, so of course, you know, it, it does always depend on the industry and where they're at and what message they're looking to get out. Um, but yeah, you know, I do, I do give away a lot of, um, free tips and just uh, general video advice on my page. So feel free yeah. to follow me on LinkedIn and your videos. Um, you sure do. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I like being able to help people that way, but you know, a big thing that a lot of people like, pretty much the biggest mistake I see that I always tell people starting out with video is, you know, don't introduce yourself. Don't have like a kind of um, predictable or uh, boring introduction because it's really in that first three to five seconds in the newsfeed that you want to get someone's attention. If I can right remember away. correctly, you said nobody cares. Yes. It's yeah, boring. exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah you gotta, you yeah. gotta get, get real with people sometimes. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I have heard a you. I heard you loud and clear. I, I, I said, oh, don't do that, Matt. Don't do it. Don't exactly. Do it. And, and, you know, think about like from a user perspective, think about what would attract you in the newsfeed. What would get you to stop? What would kind of stand out to you and be exciting? So you always want to come up with a headline. And, um, you know, especially with video starting out, do what you can to keep the message short because people are more likely to invest in you as a stranger when your content is uh, shorter than longer. 
So keep that in mind as well. And then, you know, you got to figure out who it is you're attracting. You know, what do they want to hear about? What would be valuable to them? So they can, you know, click back to your page and say, you know, wow, I'm going to follow this person. They, they helped me. They provided me value and didn't ask for anything in exchange. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, some of one of the things that I've thought about what what you're saying is the same thing. Is like what what keeps that person awake at night? What mm -hmm. what makes them yeah. roll around and say, God, if they just you know could exactly, and you yeah. just speak to that thing. Yes, and and the reality is, it should be the same thing to you because that's that's the ideal client, right? It's like you relate with one another. So I mean, those things should be parallel in a sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cause when you're trying to, to reach for something, when you're trying to like, ah, oh, I'm just going to try to act like this is something important to me, but I just really want their money in their business. It doesn't usually work out, does it? <laughs> no. Yeah. People can smell it, you know? Yeah. It doesn't smell good. Not good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have had some some pretty phenomenal videos I've been watching. I mean, lots of them. I haven't watched them all. Thank you. You're Thanks, welcome. I, I got a lot of catching up to, but I'm, I'm busy guy <laughs> too, so I, I can't watch them all. I yeah. I watch some of mine. I think I'm pretty funny sometimes too, but. I'm sure you are. I'm sure I am too. <laughs> you know, hopefully. That's the, that's the goal. Um, but, you know, there's, there's been some videos that I watched that weren't all just, um, just fun and games. Uh, there's some, some really serious things that you've been able to share. Um, yeah. Uh, there's some sides of you that, that maybe some folks don't know. I mean, you've got a lot of content. So, you know, some folks maybe haven't gone back and watched video number 17 or 23 or four, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and there's a lot of things about you that makes you you. Uh, I know that you, uh, you know, you grew up in, in quite an interesting background at home and uh, music was, was a part of your life. Um, you, you went to school and you kind of were digging into some things that were kind of, you know, what do I do? It was music. It was arts, you know? And then yeah. uh, you became like Eminem. You're like a big famous rap star. <laughs> I, I was not. It was Shay and M. Shake, shake and Shay. Yeah, it was right? and Shay. Yeah. Right. So she, she was in rap music. So, I mean, I'd love if you can kind of share a little bit about that. Cause that's so super fun. Like, ra like rap music. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like it's super funny because, you know, like I was pretty sheltered. I really didn't even start listening to, um, rap or just like music, m musical artists that were, um, minorities in general until I was, you know, like, probably a teenager until I was a little older. I did, you know, go find it on my own with friends. But then it was like, once I discovered rap and specifically like female rap, I just like never looked back. Like I, I love uh, rappers in general. A lot of them kind of have a similar attitude to me. A lot of them have like a chip on their shoulder, something to prove that kind of have that like aggressive creative energy. I just love that. I love women rappers. You know, I would like, I started getting in the habit of like just, um, curating all these female artists. Who's, one of, your who's one of your favorites? Trina. Trina. <laughs> Trina's wow. like my favorite female rapper. Yeah. She is super, super raunchy, but she has great energy and, um, yeah, like it's good, good music to like, I'll work out to it. It kind of hypes me up. It gets me confident. Um, and like, I, I know you and I were kind of talking about this earlier offline, but you know, I really wasn't the best singer naturally. So I kind of gravitated towards rap because it was just easier for me and I could get my, you know, creativity and get my thoughts out, um, in, in that medium, uh, yeah. a lot more successfully than trying to sing everything, which was more of a struggle for me. So, but yeah, you know, I, I, I love listening to rap. I still listen to rap, but, you know, I, I love, I love hip hop and, um, yeah, so I, I definitely got into it for a period of time. You know, there was a couple of years um, when I, after I dropped out of college, there was definitely a couple of years where that's really what my focus was and what I was pursuing, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So, I mean, that's, that's wordsmithing, obviously. Rapping, you know, some people think, oh, rap music, blah, blah, blah. But there's, um, well, to good artists anyway, some folks that really put thought and effort into it. Uh, there's some powerful lines there there's some some serious thought it's not just like saying well what rhymes with 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 Arangelo? what rhymes with with peat moss i mean people think of whatever i mean yeah yeah i know I've what been, you're saying i've been to scotland i like peat moss anyway so <laughs> you know 
what is it like for that with the words? I mean, um, I'm a singer songwriter and for me, a lot of times I don't spend like weeks on writing a song. I just kind of have a thought. I sit down, grab a pen and phew, I just, it comes like crazy. Absolutely. Like, that same I, you? Oh my gosh. Yeah. When I, when I'm actually like inspired to write a song and I have an idea and it just like sparks and I sit down, I, I've pretty much written every single song I've ever made in like, within like an hour. Like when I yeah. write, it just like comes, you know, unless, unless I'm really not in a place to write, you know, and I'm trying to force it and I kind of have writer's block, then it, it'll be like a struggle. But no, as long as I'm, as long as I'm inspired and like the flow energy is there, I actually come up with, uh, lyrics very quickly <laughs> that's awesome yeah, thank you Which, no, well, well of course you're welcome that's uh that tells a lot about you know of course what you're doing with content and writing and marketing and uh, that's you. all all wordsmithing and uh, you know at the end of the day we have to do what's what's fun some people struggle with that uh, not everybody has a job that's fun not everybody gets to live in their dream their dream job and kind of mm -hmm. get trapped and you know i think there's folks that might be listening or watching us today that, that might be in that world. Um, and maybe some that are thinking, how do I, you know, how do I go there? How do I get out of this corporate job, desk job that I'm sitting in? And I know mm -hmm. that there's more for me. I don't know what that is. And yeah. you know, there's, there's people that struggle with that. And, and sometimes they think there's just really no hope. They're just going to be, you know, I'm stuck here for life. I, I can't. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's a really uh, common problem. Um, I think it's in, you know, and I feel really fortunate that I kind of did go through that uncomfortable risk phase really young um, because I do see how the older you get, maybe, you know, the, the harder it gets where you kind of psych yourself out like, well, but I've had this job for 10 years. It's what I'm used to. I don't want to go backwards. I don't want to, you know, be uncomfortable. Um, and Gary Vaynerchuk actually talks a lot about this, how people just stay unhappy in a job because they're just scared of like, going backwards financially like people will be so used to like you know their the house they live in and the car they drive and these sort of like material things even knowing that like they're not super happy and like they're not fulfilled the thought of them like you know um being uh openly taking a step backwards in terms of some of these material things in order to take a risk and quit their job and you know start their own business invest all of their eggs into this new basket um, you kind of have to really put down your ego to do that. And I think people just get caught up in like, um, not wanting to be seen as a failure potentially, oh, yeah. which is really funny because you, you kind of, you have to risk failure to be a successful entrepreneur. But you know, like I said, like the older you get, the more you might just get complacent and get kind of stuck. And like, you know, the years go by and you just feel like I haven't done it yet. It just gets harder and harder. You're going to be uncomfortable. I think once you just accept it and face that, like, look, you're going to be uncomfortable for a while. It's going to suck. Um, you're going to go, yeah, yeah, you, you might go backwards financially and in terms of your free time and all of that, you know, you really have to make a massive shift and it's really hard for people to make that shift. But I think once they do. And once they're kind of over that initial hump of like discomfort and struggling. Um, yeah. I mean, well, look at the proof. Everyone will tell you is the best thing I ever did. And, and yeah. then in, in the long run, they're able to have a lot more freedom and of course, happiness as well. Yeah. I mean, of course, nothing's an overnight success, right? I mean, I've been at this for 30 years and I've been at this kind of stuff recently the past few and yeah, you know, I'm just now starting to have some some traction. So it's not like I mean, never give up success, right? Yes, you can't, you can't <laughs> give up. I mean, heck, I'm supposed to be dead. So I mean, you know, yeah, no, what's the, what's the what's the deal? I mean, at this point, you know, I had no other choice, you know. And and for you, you know, we talked about uh, some of those things just a moment ago, and 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 that hope and and not giving up, you know, and sometimes that despair. And and I know that there was a a moment in your life. Uh, and not that long ago that you had some of those exact feelings mm -hmm. and, uh, and you, you do a lot of writing. You even do a lot of writing to, to, to remember the things you're thinking and feeling you, you yeah. have a diary, a journal that you keep. A, yeah. So, and, and there's a, a really powerful story about that. You mind, you mind sharing that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I do do a lot of journaling. I've kind of, you know, ever since I was a little girl, kept a journal. It's where I write like my poems and, 
just where I document my life. You know, I, it's not like super consistent. Like it's not like I have like an entry for every day of my life, but right. you know, I'll just randomly dive into my journal here or there um, throughout the years. So I, it's, it's actually kind of cool. I do have a bit of an archive of, of my life now just because of all my journals, but yes. Yeah, so, you know, I've struggled with mental health in my life and I've had uh, a lot of depression and more recently, about like a year and a half ago, which is just before I got on LinkedIn, um, I was having a really hard time. You know, my depression was uh, just kind of getting worse. I was I was becoming like more and more lethargic, really um, wow. <laughs> almost almost like that person I just described who was like completely yeah. at their job. You know, I was just very like going through the motions, but wasn't happy. I, I knew in my heart that I should still be doing music or doing something a little more creative so I could have that outlet. And I didn't at the time, you know, I was really like just living the agency life. I was the COO. It was like day to day, like meetings, organizing, managing. Um, so even though, you know, I was making money and my business was doing well, I just like wasn't fulfilled and I was, I was starting to get really depressed. Um, and I do think a huge piece of that had to do with me not following my highest calling, which is creating um, my own content, you know. So, yeah, so I ended up writing about it in my diary. I think if I had the exact date, it was like end of end of March or April, somewhere, somewhere in that. It's in the, the video, yeah, because I did a video on this story. But I wrote in my diary, you know, like I was kind of uh, like praying to God, but in my diary, I said like, you know, dear God, like I'm just – I'm so at my wits end. Like, I just can't do this anymore. I'm so unhappy. I don't want to live. Like, how do I know? How, how can you show me or give me a sign that like, I have meaning here. I'm going to have a purpose here and that my life won't be in vain because I was feeling really, um, not alive. You know, I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling alive. And a week after I wrote that, like literally one week to the date, um, is when I met Q, who is the person who ultimately influenced me to get on LinkedIn and start doing video. So, wow. you know, and that, and then, you know, it, the rest is history. LinkedIn's changed my life and my business, but yeah. it's really like, it took me a couple months after the fact to go back to how I was feeling and kind of analyze, you know, like, what was that? You know, like, when did I write this entry? When did I meet Q? So I kind of like, I looked at the entry, I cross-referenced with my calendar and like looked up our first meeting and like, it was like, wow, I didn't even realize at the time that what I had asked for, what I had put out into the universe and my intention found me within a week. And then, you know, within another week and another month, I was, you know, killing it on LinkedIn. I was getting tons of support from the community. I was actually talking about mental health on LinkedIn, which was also cathartic for me. So it was like, all of a sudden I started feeling way better. I was, I had people that were listening to me, validating me. I was creating again, which made me a lot happier. And then it was like, I just arrived at this moment. and was like, oh my gosh, I was so depressed a few months ago. Like what happened? And yeah. that's when I pulled out my entry, my, my diary. And um, yeah, I ended up making a video on that story. Gosh, that's so amazing. Yeah, um, it's really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, wow. I mean, uh, prayer works. I mean, I, I'm proof of that. You're proof of that. Um, you know, whether people believe or not, uh, you know, it doesn't change the fact that it worked. And yep. yeah, <laughs> so if exactly. it works, that means that there's something to it. But Oh, yeah. Uh, and if you know me, like, I'm not religious. You know, no, like, I, I, yeah. don't, I don't identify with a religion. I don't go to church. So, like but I still very much pray and believe in the power of prayer and gratitude, really, you know, be grateful, be thankful, but also ask, ask for what it is you need from the universe. Yeah. I mean, some people are just so riddled with fear yes. and, and I believe that, um, you know, the, the prison of, of disappointment, uh, the prison of anguish, um, less than, is a place where people feel like I'm not even going to ask because nobody cares anyway. Mm, yeah. And that's a hard place to be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Shay, like a year and a half ago, Shay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I don't know if anybody on LinkedIn could imagine a LinkedIn without a Shay Robottom. 
Aw, thanks, Matt. Yeah, you're welcome. But I mean, a year and a half, Shay. Yeah. I mean, come on. That is just freaking crazy ridiculous. So that means it's possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, you're not a, you're not superwoman. You're not like you weren't. Were you, were you like super famous when you came on LinkedIn? No, no. When I first started posting videos on the platform, it was actually May 7th of last year was my first post. So a little over a year now. Um, I st- when I started posting, I had uh, 4,000 connections on my profile. So that was like my starting point. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. And now you've got a little more than 4,000, right? Uh, yeah, it's over 66,000 followers now. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, right? So <laughs> Thank you. It's yeah. like, I, I look at LinkedIn now kind of like in dog years. Like I tell people, it's like, so on LinkedIn, if you have 4,000 likes or 4,000 followers, that's like Facebook's um, 150,000 likes and followers. Oh, right? okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I, would agree. I would agree with that. Everything's yeah. like smaller scale here. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's, it's complete. So I, I've had some folks that have contacted me lately and they've like, you know, they feel less than, they're like, you know, I've, I've posted some stuff and nobody even look, looks at me. I only had like, I only had 300 comments on my last post. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like you think that that's awesome, right? 300. I mean, that's that's in dog years and Facebook years. That's like, like 3000 comments or 5,000 comments, right? That's good stuff. So there's a big difference. You know, so, okay. So you, you dove into what you're doing now and, and your life, uh, you know, you're still you, but your life has changed in the sense of you're, you're living into something that you aspired to, but, but you didn't necessarily know. It's not like you said one day, I want to be a LinkedIn star, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, so what's that, what's that like? How do you, how do you now have focus and clarity as to what you're trying to come? I mean, you have a business, right? So it's not yeah. like you just do LinkedIn and it's really hard to balance that. I mean, I spend a lot of time trying to work LinkedIn, but then I also have to right. do stuff. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It is a struggle. How mm-hmm. do you do how, I mean, it's time management, obviously, but I mean, and you've got, you know, you're, you're blessed now to have some opportunities with some different financial opportunities. So, I mean, you could have some staff members or help or administrative people that could help you. Um, yeah. That's always good. I mean, so what are some of those places that, that uh, those rhythms, those places that you feel like, man, this is some of my new life now. This is kind of how I how I do things when I wake up, when I do this, how, this how I maintain it. And how do yeah. you, how do you stretch to do more? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I'm always testing what works and what doesn't. I'm always experimenting on the platform. Um, not only for my own benefit, but my clients, you know, um, and really just trying to always stay ahead so, you know, you'll notice something, especially on a platform like LinkedIn, which is in its infancy. And even like uh, today compared to two years ago when video first came out, I mean, the videos that were coming out on LinkedIn two years ago and getting a lot of reach were very different than the videos you see getting attention today. Right. Um, so like the standard for what's going to perform and what's going to get reach is always the bar is always being raised. Right. So for, for me, it's not only about like, you know, what works, but what's no longer going to work at a certain point and how can we prepare for the future and what's going to, um, you know, take, take my content to the next level, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, just being a student and always observant on the platform, I think there's so much opportunity right now. And, um, it's going to be interesting to see like, how the platform evolves because yeah, I mean, I'm pretty interested in that too. It's, I think yeah. it's actually pretty fun. Actually, it helps keep things fresh and alive for me when I'm doing. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. And it is always changing. You know, the algorithm's always changing and yeah. video video is just like revolutionized the platform. You know, two years is not that long to no. have video. I think we're still not even in the peak of seeing, you know, what video can be on LinkedIn really. Yeah, it's uh, you're right. It's quite interesting. There's there's a plethora of videos and a plethora of of types of videos that are on LinkedIn. Yeah, and we have uh, we have a lot of, of straight up educational stuff. Yeah, um, there's on LinkedIn. There are things that are here that are greatly beneficial to 
to businesses and people that are trying to, to advance themselves that yeah. it's like free, free stuff that's put mm-hmm. out by LinkedIn, by, by people that are on LinkedIn, whatever, you know. Uh, and then there's stuff that's just, you know, inspirational. There's stuff that's, you know, uh, challenging, uh, motivational stuff. You know, there's, there's just so many different things. And one of the things you just said was, you know, that you kind of look ahead to what's not going to work. Yeah. Um, that's pretty good. Now, you don't mean that from a, from a negative perspective, but you mean that, well, kind of, but I mean, you're not negative about it, but you're kind of looking forward to saying, you know, what, what, what we don't waste our time with and where mm-hmm. do we invest our time? Right. Right. So yeah. how do you, how do you determine what not to invest your time in? Sorry, um, that's a good question. You weren't ready for that one. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I think, you know, just always tracking and always being mindful of like what, what's working now and what's going to work in the future. Like, so for example, you know, in the beginning, I was a lot less calculated in my approach. I was sort of, you know, still in experimental phase when I first got on the platform. I was talking about all sorts of random topics. I was shooting on my cell phone, you know, which is fine. And you can have a ton of success doing that. Um, But just always like raising the bar. Like for me, it was like, okay, I want, I have a, now I have a little bit of a follower base. Now I think is an appropriate time to invest in a little more expensive setup, you know, and then, uh, what was like the next level from there was the humor videos. So that was when I really had like a light bulb moment because I released, it was actually like one of my first, like it was literally like the second or third video I had even done that was like of a humorous nature like that. And it just completely crushed all of my other content. Like, you know, so, so that's what like I that worked. <laughs> yeah. Like, so that's what I mean when I say like, what's not going to work. I'm not saying that my more standard, you know, vlog style videos aren't effective and don't still make a difference, but to see how much more effective, like it, for me personally, the humor was made me think about the future in a new light. Like, okay, well, uh, eventually, you know, as this platform gets more competitive, you know, there's a good chance that these, other style videos that don't really compare to the, some of the posts I've been having that are going viral, there's a chance that those are just going to become irrelevant. So, um, you know, and and I'm still, you know, testing and figuring things out, but just stuff like that, really kind of paying attention to what works and paying attention to what the people want so that you don't let your own ego get in the way of like, but, but this is what I want to create. And this is what I am comfortable creating. Well, you know, at some point you got to be real with yourself if that's, if it's time to change. Mm, That's so good. Do you have uh, people in your life that you bounce things off of to do this with, or you just do this by yourself? process? No, no, definitely. My partner, Luke Marlowe, um, you know, he's a marketing genius. So definitely I work on, a a lot of my content ideas with him. And we also have a team of, you know, writers and creatives that um, will work with the content on. Yes. Yeah. So you kind of like him, like you went to, you went to Australia and I think you mentioned him at least once or twice while you're. Yeah, definitely. When I was like (laughs) taking off and coming back home. Right. I was like, okay. I know. I know. I remember I was like, Oh Lord, she really likes this guy. Doesn't she? And you yep. said, I really love him. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. So no, good. totally. So good. So good. He's and the best. Yeah. Oh, that's, well, that's great. So it's good to have somebody and it's good to have some people that you can, you can count on uh, to help keep you accountable and to help keep you motivated. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Accountability is huge. You know, I think that's also what I say helped me in the beginning was like having Q kind of like keeping me accountable. Like, okay, Hey, are you posting? Are you doing, you know what I mean? Like, it's always good to have, especially just starting out that person that's going to keep you, keep you going. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Shay, you know, we're kind of getting towards the end here and I've got, uh, you know, we're, we've got some folks behind you coming up in, uh, in some of the hope revealed podcasts. Uh, Shanae oh, Murray, she's going to be, she's going to be. Oh, awesome. Up. Yes. yes I love Shanae. Um, and just yesterday I was, uh, talking with, uh, Heather Monahan. I don't know if you know who Heather Monahan is, but she's, uh, mm-hmm. she's really moving along on LinkedIn and she's going to be coming up shortly. A friend of mine, his name's Lee Bradshaw and he does marketing. He has a marketing business as well. And, and, uh, he's actually going to be on 
tomorrow. We already did his show, but he'll be tomorrow. So there's a lot of different folks that are nice. coming in. Yeah, oh, it's good, so cool. good for you. So many different, uh, many different voices and different ideas, you know, and, and everybody kind of has some things that really are, you know, that, that are, that are uniquely you. Yeah. And, uh, and like you said, you have a lot of followers and that's a, not a boastful thing. It's just a fact. I mean, it's a good thing. And, you know, there's people going to be listening to you. There's people that listen to me and, and, uh, that's a good thing in the sense that, you know, we have an opportunity to speak into somebody's life. Yes. And to me, that is a, uh, a freaking huge responsibility. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that words matter. Words matter. I mean, yes. there have been kingdoms that have been built and destroyed on words. Uh, yeah. There have been people's lives lost over words. So powerful. So what kind of words do you think you would, could have to help people that may be listening today that are, that are at the point you were before you wrote that thing in your diary and met Q, that moment in your life that so many people are at, Shay, you know just as well as I do. And it doesn't mean that you and I don't have those moments because I do. I know you do. Um, you know, we don't sit here and talk about all of our bad days all the time, but mm-hmm. – my God, to be sure you have them as well as I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so what, what would be some ways if, if that person is listening to us right now and you're looking at that person right now in the eyes and, and talking to their heart, say, what would be something that you could share with them that would be hope that would be resilience that would say you can do this. What would, what would that thing be? Yeah. Great question. Um, well, you know, I think a lot of the issues that people face, it, we get in our own way and, and people don't realize, you know, that they have the power to change everything in their life. Um, for me, it was a lot of like negative self-talk that was um, perpetuating this negative state I was in and, you know, amplifying the depression because that's essentially what it is. Depression is, you know, not, you know, feeling worthy, not feeling valuable, um, and, and really feeling helpless in a lot of cases. So I think the people that are struggling are, should be more mindful of the way that they speak to themselves. And we need to be a lot more gentle with ourselves. Um, you know, you make a mistake or, you know, you, you went for something and it didn't work. Like, just instead of like, Oh, you're such an idiot, you know, just like you tried and like, Hey, good for you for trying just the words that we use toward ourselves, We're the hardest on ourselves. You know, if it was your friend, if it was your friend who made a mistake, think about what you would say to that person. You'd probably be a lot more empathetic, but we tend to be so hard on ourselves. And the other thing is, you know, we feel like we can't ask for things. We feel like we're not um, entitled to set boundaries or to go for what we want in life. And a lot of times people who are um, struggling, who are, you know, depressed are, they might not even realize they're in a situation in which like they've given up so much of their power and they've given away the control. And now they um, have been doing it for so long that they're in a point in their life where they actually, they, they forgot that they have control of their life and they forgot that like, you know, they can do it. And that's when this like negative self-talk starts and everything can kind of spiral downhill from there. So just be gentle with yourself, you know, really take it easy on yourself. I I truly do believe, you know, all the good and all the evil in the world, people are trying their best people. I mean, that's all we can ask for is for people to try their best. So be easy on yourself and don't forget to ask for what you need. And don't forget that you have the right to set boundaries and you have the right to remove yourself from toxic situations or people that aren't bettering you, that people and situations that are holding you back, you do not have to stay there. You know, it is your right to put yourself first and to take care of yourself. So always remember that. Mm, That's so good. Thanks so much for that, Shay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, I'm super excited that we've had a chance just to talk and get a chance yeah. to share with some folks. Yeah, thank you so much for that. I know it's been uh, it's been fun trying to get to the point where we're at today, and and I'm super excited to share this with folks. And um, you know, good luck to your rap star success. And, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Looking forward to your explicit lyric uh, content that'll be coming out sometime. <laughs> yeah, a record store near you. 
<laughs> we managed to go through this whole thing without one cuss word. That's pretty good. Oh wow, that is yeah. Yeah, awesome. that's a good thing. We're 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 clean right here in Hope Revealed. There you go. You yeah. have to say that. So it's funny. So it's thanks so much for your time and uh, and for sharing what you ha- have that with folks and and for doing what you do. Thanks for um, thanks for being consistent and oh, for yeah. um for for sticking into this um, because now there is a little bit of weight of of people that are expecting things from you. Yes, yes. That's yeah. the pressure's on. <laughs> it is it is on and it's not always easy. So I right. uh, just want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing and keep pressing in because you you are making a difference and uh, I'm so thankful that you you have found uh your voice and uh you know what's interesting is that at one point uh, in time you struggled with the fact that that you couldn't find your voice. Yes. And, yeah. and now you have. And uh, it's not what you expected, but yeah. it's, it's even better than you hoped for. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So I'm super, super happy for you, Shay, and super happy for those of you that are watching and listening today because um, Shay is not so special that she's the only person on the planet that this could happen to or for. Um, yeah. There is no reason, none, that you can't do this to. None. Now, it's not easy. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it takes time. Uh, it does take some money, as you have to spend money to make money, the old uh, business words. But yep. uh, if, if you really want this, uh, the only way you're going to get there is n- never quit. Never. You have to keep going. Now, I'm not saying it's worth the expense of, of your closest loved ones, your family. I mean, there's value in input from people. Um, it doesn't mean that everybody always understands what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there is a price to be paid. Not saying walk away from family at all. Don't listen to that. Uh, I am saying that there is something that's worth fighting for. And yeah. uh, you, my friends, are worth fighting for, right? That's what Shay does every day. She's fighting for you. She's fighting for herself. And she's fighting to be heard with a message that she thinks is important for the world. And you have one of those two folks. So thanks so much again, Shay, for being here today. And uh, my continued uh, prayers and, and hopes for you for your success. And I hope that you just uh, knock it out of the park in 2019 and 2020. is like, man, I can't believe how, how much we were able to do this year. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for that, Matt. I appreciate the wise words. And yeah, everything you said is true. You know, if you can dream it, you can do it. Ah, what a better way to say goodbye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in with us today here on Hope Revealed. Bye. Bye.